hearing the record button. Oh, I guess we're live now. I, oh. I didn't. I didn't hear the actual. I'm, I was waiting for a sound effect for uh, uh, the, the, the when the Comics are Great logo came up. But uh, we're we're live now, and welcome to Comics are Great, the visual storytelling show recorded live at the Ann Arbor District Library in Ann Arbor, Michigan, uh, right off of the corner of Fifth and William Street. And I'm here in the uh, fourth floor studio, recording studio. My name is Jersey Drozd. I make comics, and I teach about comics, and I teach people how to make comics sometimes. And with me today are a couple of really exciting people, I, I hope. I'm crossing my fingers. We'll see how they hold up. Do our best, yeah. <laughs> In studio today is local co uh, comic book writer. Yes. Is that the is a proper title? Yeah, oh, sure. Okay. Paul Story, storyville.com, my arch enemy. Yeah, well, <laughs> you're, I'm your arch enemy, but you're just one of my nemeses. Oh, I'm, I'm, one, I'm one of Legion. Oh, yeah. man. You're like the kangaroo to my Spider-Man. Oh, not even Stilt Man? No. Oh. That's oh. really more a daredevil. Well, Spider-Man fought Stilt Man, too. Yeah, right? I know, but oh, it's really... Okay. Yeah. All right, you got me out of technicality. You win the advantage <laughs> story, but uh, Paul's story of, of, uh, of Michigan, who's going to be at the Kids Read Comics uh, celebration this weekend. Yes, indeed. And uh, we'll talk more about Kids Read Comics later. Uh, and we're going to talk about a lot of interesting things today. But first, I have to introduce our disembodied voice guest. Uh, when people listen to the audio podcast after the fact, they're not going to know that she wasn't actually here. But well, they will now. They will now. Uh, but <laughs> the, the non-local guest, our remote guest, is uh, Ms. Alice Hunt of GoodbyeChains.com. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I am not a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Alice uh, it, and I also have a rivalry because uh, I cannot convince her that Rainbow Dash is actually a pretty awesome pony of the My Little Ponies cartoon. <laughs> well, that's a funny way to mispronounce rarity, man. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I, I don't know what you kids are talking about. We are talking about ponies, and it's very important. It is very important. I, I, I got that impression. So straight out of Philadelphia uh, is uh, Alice Hunt. Uh, we, we argue on Twitter because uh, Rainbow Dash is a pretty cool pony. but uh, no, no, she's not. I don't know why you, why you feel that way. I don't like her because of that one where they had everybody wanted to go to pony prom, but there was only one ticket. And Applejack's like, well, I want to go to get my grandmother a hip replacement. And Rainbow Dash is like, do, do, do. No. <laughs> I used to work in a nursing home, man. I've seen people that need hip replacements. It's very sad. Oh, so maybe it was just... Uh, Have you had seen horses that need hip replacement? No, they get shot. Well, then perhaps it... Did. So Rainbow Dash is actually the most moral character on the show. She's just operating within the moral parameters of ponies. Well, ponies don't have guns, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. They, they would have to hoof them to death. Oh, that's, and that's, that's just brutal. wrong. Yeah. <sighs> All right, well, well, we can debate this at another time because I'm going to work on getting Lauren Faust on the show, who is the writer and creator of the new po uh, Pony Show. Paul, it's actually it's a really well-written, tightly written, beautifully designed cartoon. It's really great. Yeah, I have, to, I have to agree with him there. I mean, I was really resistant to it for a long time, and I still kind of am, but I have seen a couple of episodes, and it's pretty good. So check and out. I'm a grown, I mean, I'm, I'm a grown woman ghost. <laughs> yes. I, I heard your ghost dog earlier, by the way. No, no, he's alive. I'm haunting him. Oh, okay. Yes. It's, it's the reverse of, uh, of Daniel Corsetto's uh, strip where the girls ghost with cat is, uh, yes, Girls with Slingshot, where the ghost cat is haunting them. Exactly. Oh. I, I have chosen to haunt him for the rest of his miserable little life. Wow. Sort of like he's, Cesar, what's his name? The Dog Whisperer, but in ghost yeah. form. Milan. Is that his name? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I've only seen the show a couple times. Yeah, he, he knows why. <laughs> 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 okay, so um, this is this is a local show, and I'm trying to use this as a platform to introduce the people of Ann Arbor to some local cartoonists and remote cartoonists. So I want to introduce you guys to them by letting that you tell them about something that you are known for or something that you want people to know about. So I'll start with Mr. Paul's story. Uh, my boyfriend is a monster. That's what you have in your hands here, so you can that hold is, it up and show it to the camera. <laughs> that um, do the vanna. Um, yeah, that's a a 128-page uh, graphic novel that I just put out with uh, artist Eldon Calger, who has a web comic that you can find at astray three the number three dot com. Um, and uh, this is actually, I believe, uh, Eldon's first print work. He did a wonderful job. Um, it's uh, part of the My Boyfriend is a Monster line. It's the second book, 
but they're not sequential in that, you know, it's not a continuing story. It's a motif. Uh -huh. So uh, this one is about uh, uh, young Maria McBride who meets a guy named Tom Stone who turns out to be assembled. Oh, so he's, he's a, a Frankenstein's monster sort of guy. Very much so. Very okay, much so. which is kind of gross. Yeah. So, kinda. so should I keep my six-year-old away from this book? Um, it it is aimed more at uh, at tweens, if you will. Okay. Um, uh, it's a horror romance action comedy. <laughs> okay. Um, there's no sci-fi in there, so or western. Wait, so. how can there not be sci-fi? The guy's assembled. Well, that's a good point, and and people do argue that Frankenstein is the first modern sci-fi. So, yeah, I guess there's that's in there too. It's a little steampunk in there too. Just oh. sort of a little, little steampunk imagery in there. You were also known for some other books, which actually are probably in the library's collection. If not, they should be. Uh, you did uh, a retelling of Robin Hood, right? And right. you're kind of a Robin Hood scholar. Of I sorts. well, I'm a buff. I, okay. I know some Robin Hood scholars, and they put me to shame. But uh, yeah, I, I uh, worked on a whole series of the graphic myths and legends again from the. Um, Graphic Universe line uh, that's who also published uh, Made for Each Other. And um, I did Hercules, Perseus, uh, Amaterasu, the Japanese sun goddess, um, Yu the Great, who is a hero of China, um, Beowulf, which was a 2008 children's choice finalist. Um, that's a cool uh, program where they uh, have reading programs, I think, over the summer at schools and libraries. And the kids actually pick their favorites. Oh, that's even better. So, yeah. It's, it's some dippy committee, right? Yeah. There you go. Well, it's a dippy committee of kids. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, kidding kids. <laughs> um, but, yeah. So I've done several of those. And I actually, my very first comic was called Robin of Sherwood, about the daughter of Robin Hood taking up the fight. Mm. And uh, we're currently working on a kind of a remastered edition to put out in trade paperback. Oh, cool. Um, so I, I, I am... Just dying of curiosity, the uh, portrayal of Robin Hood in Time Bandits, was that very accurate? It was particularly <laughs> accurate. I, I, I particularly liked the fact that he was the only clean <laughs> the person. Clean guy. <laughs> so, um, okay, so we'll talk more about My Boyfriend is a Monster, I'm sure, as we, we dig into our topic today. I, I prefer to refer to it by the title Made for Each Other. Made for Each Other, okay. See, so, see what's going on there? I yeah. actually wanted to call it Date of Frankenstein, but they... <laughs> oh, that would actually be pretty good. Uh, but Made for Each Other is pretty good, too, because it's got that pun in there. But uh, So I want to turn now to Alice, who does GoodbyeChains.com. Goodbye Chains is the name of the comic. And uh, introduce us a little bit to what that series is about. This one is definitely not for the youngins. Dear God, no. <laughs> <laughs> what are you no, trying to I say? <laughs> I actually am a little appalled at some of um, the ages of some of our fans because I really, I don't think it's appropriate for like teens and tweens, but you know, some of our fans are teens and tweens, so I always feel kind of weird about that. But on the internet, I can't, <laughs> I can't keep them away, but I just, anyway, if they enjoy it, that's great. <laughs> anyway, um, no, but uh, Goodbye Chains, it's a historical adventure comic, it's about... Oh, sorry, that's me. What is that? What? Did now you, just you don't start hear anything. Music? I did not mean to. My, I, I was rebooting my Ustream and then it started playing an ad, so I just had to uh, mute my Mac. Sorry, everybody. Uh, Go ahead, Alice. I didn't mean okay. to interrupt. That was rude. No, no, that's okay. I just, I was a little. Confused. No, no, it, it is rude. Jersey's rude. <laughs> well, <laughs> if you insist. Thank you. Uh, no, uh, Goodbye Chains is a historical adventure. It's about a communist from Boston going west to Colorado in 1884. He meets up with possibly the worst possible person to meet up with, and uh, they have adventures, and things blow up, and it's all very educational and uh, historically mostly accurate, as far as I can tell. Yeah. I, I love that he's a, a communist Irish um, gunsmith. I, I was reading a little bit of it, uh, and I, I just, it's so, like, kind of, oh, by the way, I also. Well, he's not, he's not a gunsmith. He is a civil engineer, though. Oh. Well, he and designed his own gun. He did design it, but somebody else made it for him. Ah. He basically bought it, and, it said, and, and he said, please put as much fancy stuff on this gun as you can, and I will pay you money to do that. So, but anyway. 
And it has that, that comic, uh, it, we should say, is drawn by Tracy Williams. Uh, yes. Trey Comics on the Twitters. And, mm -hmm. uh, oh my gosh, her stuff just gets more and more beautiful every day. I was comparing some of the latest pages to some of the first pages she did. Yeah. Uh, it, I don't know what she's been doing lately, but it's getting so clean and crisp, and she's using a lot more shading techniques with her lines, and oh, it's just gorgeous. So. Well, the the more she reads, the better she gets, because she has, um, oh, I forget who does it, but it's the manga, the, the bride story one, that's nothing but cross-hatching and patterns. Okay. And she is just in love with that kind of thing. So she gets very, very creative with the techniques she uses. I mean, I said for the the most recent dream sequence, I said, well, it would be kind of cool if we could do something sort of impressionistic here. And she turned that out, and it was just incredible. So, yeah, 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 that crazy, like, patchy kind of watercolory look to it. That, that does yeah. not, It does not look like a Photoshop filter. I mean, that looked like that, that was some craftsmanship going on behind that. Oh, yeah, that was that was her. That was all her. So. The things that she can do with Photoshop is just incredible. So if you are an adult and you like the Communist Manifesto and you like gunplay and you like ambiguous relationships uh, between genders, I would highly recommend Goodbye Chains, right? If you like historical uh, fiction, I would recommend Goodbye Chains. Does that sound fair? That sounds fair. That sounds actually really nice. Thank you. Oh, wow. See, I did it. Soundbite. <laughs> Soundbite. You can put it on the back of the book and nobody will care. Who? <laughs> <laughs> What a weird name. That must not be his real name. It must be like Prince. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, before we started recording, Alice threw out something that I thought was absolutely fascinating that uh, I was not expecting to talk about, but I want to talk about it because I got a couple writers in the room, and uh, this whole topic of ambiguity of gender came up and whether or not that assists you. And Because, you know, when I was first starting out in webcomics, I honestly uh, uh, toyed with the idea of putting out a gender-neutral gender uh, pen name and let people assume that I'm a woman because that, that would give me an advantage in getting people to read my comic. Do, do most people know what Jersey... I mean, it's kind of a... Yeah, I guess. Well, it, 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 I see there's a whole other backstory of that that I found out through Casey Van Heis of wintersandlavelle.com is that in New Jersey, uh, dirty jurors is actually a pejorative term used for people from Jersey or the uh. state itself, and they'll spell it J-E-R-Z. So... <laughs> Uh, I, I would assume that most people, when they see my name, probably assume I'm some muscly guy in a tank top who wears gold chains. And Could says, not be farther from that. No, no. I'm actually very frail and very uh, light-skinned. And uh, You're kind of lobstering now. I'm lobstering. Well, I got these hot headphones on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Polish, so whenever the temperature gets above 75 degrees, I just turn pink. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually like a sausage casing. <laughs> So anyway, uh, this idea of like, because Alice, you were just uh, refresh us on what you were saying earlier that that inspired this question. Right. Well, you had asked me if you should call me Alice or just A Hunt, and I said I only use A Hunt online because that way my gender is ambiguous. So sometimes people think that I'm a guy, and if they think that I am a guy, they tend to maybe like the comic a bit more because they think it's by a guy instead of a woman. Hmm. Do you buy that, Paul? Because I think it's the other way around. When I go to conventions, it's more like, you're a girl, you make comics? Who knew? Well, no, of course, Alice made a point. She said they would like the comic better. Oh. Un unfortunately, sometimes when uh, with a, a female creator, they're like, oh, you're a girl. Yeah. And they're not really focusing on Well, work. let's say th at conventions you go to, like, say... Um, uh, conventions with WW in the pre the pre name of the show, you're going to run into that. If you go to an SPX or a Mocha or a TCAF or a Kids Read Comics, you're not going to run into that because people who go to those shows are good-hearted, uh, well-read, rounded people who understand that women are actually good at things. <laughs> <laughs> I will agree with all of that except the initial premise, which is that they don't notice, and I think that you still still get some people who are like, oh, wow, you know, you, you're a girl. I don't understand how this can even be possible in a post-Cosby show world that people still react that way. Really, the Cosby show <laughs> is your touchstone for that. <laughs> the Cosby show taught us repeatedly and forcefully that women Sweat, are really, really That's great. what it taught us. What's that? It taught us sweaters and pudding puffs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Claire Huxtable, guys. I mean, she was great at everything. Claire, could you get me some jello pudding? <laughs> I said somebody was going to do it. I'm yeah. glad it was Paul and not me. But anyway. You know, I told my students to something about the Cosby show. They would look at me as though 
I had stepped out of some sort of TARDIS kind of machine. I mean, they, they don't know anything older than 2000, maybe. So. Wow. Wow. I mean, I, I showed them yesterday in class the, uh, the John Belushi Little Chocolate Donuts sketch from Saturday Night Live. There, there was a reason. It was a scientific reason. Uh, <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> it, it, it actually uh, boosts uh, uh, reading comprehension skills, watching John Belushi. I'm, I'm glad you didn't show him the one with the, the uh, powdered donuts where they were talking about drug use in the, uh, in the gym. Oh, know. well, in retrospect, it's just kind of sad. Yeah. But, <laughs> well, that is true. <laughs> But no, they they had never seen it. They were <laughs> not really sure why it was supposed to be funny. It was it was tragic. Oh, but yeah. um, but anyway, to go back to my point, um, I actually saw a lot of this. Um, my first comics that I put online were these little pixely comics that were basically making fun of stuff that was happening in DC Comics at the time because I was weird. I was. Um, I was bored, and it was the summertime, and I had nothing better to do, so I would, you know, pump these things out. And when people thought that they were really funny, they would say, oh, yeah, this guy, he's really, really funny. You should check these out. And if I revealed that I was a woman, they're like, oh, good for you. Good oh, wow. Yeah. Um, I, I actually think that with, with my, my book, My Boyfriend is a Monster Made for Each Other, I think I would actually, if people thought it was written by a woman, I think they, there would be a... Um, a legitimacy. Well, yeah, a certain certain degree of oh, well, women understand romance, and and it's <sighs> I you know I I hate to suggest that that kind of stereotype goes on, but I think it does. You know what would help is if you change your Twitter avatar from that picture of you standing in front of an explosion to something a little to bit maybe more, flowers. Yes, a little bit more sensual, Paul. Yeah. Reveal your softer Correct. side, your your ticklish side, right? <laughs> Do I have one? I, don't know. I should say to anybody listening to this after the fact, or even now, for the uh, for that matter, go to twitter.com slash s t o r i oh, two, R's. Two, two R's. That's right. S t o double R i e v i l l e. And check out his avatar. It's the best Twitter avatar of this or any other time. I, I should say that uh, Laura Guzzo, uh, whose uh, web address is lauraguzzo.net, I believe. Um, it, she is the one that photoshopped that up for me. It's you walking away from an explosion looking defiant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, so what business do you have writing a romance story? Exactly. You should be it, doing Michael Bay movies. Exactly. Yeah, I'm saying. I, I can go work on uh, Transformers. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and further ruin it for me. Uh, as I've said, I've said it before, I'll say it a million times, that watching that movie would be like uh, watching a woman I really love date a guy who beats her. I don't want to do that. Wow. That's, yeah. that's, I don't know that domestic violence is really the way to go with that. What that, are you talking about? That, I, what Michael Bay did to that movie with those people with fish stick lips? It was, it was, it was, it was torture. I just saw the preview. I've never even seen the movies, and I, I, I almost vomited with rage. I, well, I see now I do feel like I should uh, indulge in, in you know, helping Michael Bay do more of those so that <laughs> it, further, will, it will make your heads explode. I heard a r rumor that he's doing Mutant Ninja Turtles next. I can't wait to see what he yeah. does to, to Shredder. Uh, but anyway, uh, we're, we're off topic. Uh, okay, writing. So we got a couple writers in the room, and we've already established that there's still uh, gender problems in this world. Uh, people don't. There, there was just a long Twitter discussion between uh, writer B. Clay Moore and uh, writer Gail Simone about um, the whether it's... Um, uh, it's harder for women to get into comics than guys. Um, and Well, let's define that. What do you mean get into comics? Well, and, and get into, he's talking, specifically they were talking about this new DC relaunch that's coming up, and there's only two women creators in 52 books. Okay. And, um, you know, Gail was expressing some, some uh, disappointment in that, and uh, Clay was saying that he thought that there isn't so much uh, bias as there are more guys trying to put out, trying to get involved in main, you know, quote unquote mainstream, quote traditional mainstream unquote comics, right? Superhero right. comics, yeah, yeah. And uh, and so it was an interesting back and forth. Alice, do you want to uh, write Spider Man? Uh, I don't know anything about Spider Man, so no, <laughs> I would. But, I but, would do Booster Gold if they let me. Oh, yeah. That's I think he's really funny. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't know. My experience is probably atypical, but I've had a difficult time, you know, breaking in or what have you, and I'm not sure. 
I think part of it is just poor timing on my part because, you know, I've submitted things to publishers and they've said, oh, these are really good, but the publishing realities are such that we cannot afford to publish this, so we're not going to. So I'm not sure if it's just a nice way of letting me down or if <laughs> yeah, so I was say, well, when they say that to Paul, that's exactly what it is. No, but. no they don't say that to me. They say, no, we're passing. <laughs> so you, there's a good chance that they actually like what you did. <laughs> me, they're just like, mm, no. no. And then you walk away like Dr. Zoidberg. Oh. No, that's actually then I press the button and they explode behind me. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's, <laughs> Okay, but but anyway, this whole idea of breaking in, I mean, this just leaves a weird taste in my mouth whenever I, whenever I hear it, you know? I mean, what does it mean anymore to break in? Because there's no breaking in anymore, is there? Yes, but you can you can go alternate routes. That's that's the great part is there are many more routes to uh, you know, you can do a web comic. Uh, you can do self-publishing. Um, but you know, some people want to get paid. Oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, no, no. So, I mean up front, as uh, opposed to producing a great deal of work and then have, reaping – you reap greater rewards when you do it yourself. Mm -hmm. But some people are like, hey, if I get a gig at Marvel, for example, I turn in a script. I get a check. It's lovely. I, I guarantee I because I've, I've done it. It's lovely. Oh, and I forgot. I've never worked for, for hire before, so I wouldn't know I, anything about I this. I didn't say that. <laughs> I'm just saying that from my personal experience, I like to get checks. This is, this is, this is Kids Read Comics 2, uh, 2010 all over again where we're fighting over the future of that little girl as we're giving her very Where you were trying advice. to destroy her and I was giving her hope. No, where I was trying to convince her that her future is in her hands and she can make of it what she wants to and you were trying to instill in her this dreadful – uh, slavish uh, Brazil, the movie kind of future where you are uh, just put into a slot. And I, I think that that's you hearing <laughs> different things than what I'm saying. Because okay, here's here's the counterpoint. Is like, oh, I got to check. This is great. Oh, the book got canceled. I'm off the book. Somebody else is writing this character that I didn't have any investment in other than the time I was working on the book. Well, I guess I better go hit the, the want ads. Whereas Alice, she's got this book. It's her own. It's her own forever. And, you know, she has a readership, you know. Uh, <laughs> such as this. Such as it is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, there's, there's it's just the thing that I, I think today is that breaking in means like building a brand around yourself and uh, finding as many alternate revenue streams as possible rather than trying to get that. And I'm not I'm not saying there's anything wrong with working for Marvel and DC. If they gave me a job, I, I did some work for Marvel recently on the Superhero Squad mm -hmm. trading cards. Nice. I got paid to draw Spider-Man. It was a thrill, right? I loved it. But it, it, I'm not disparaging that line of work. I'm just saying that this idea of breaking into this club, that, that's, the, that's what I always hear yeah. in my head is like, oh, let's break into the club. I don't think that even exists anymore. You don't need to do that because people who are doing their own work online get attention, get noticed, and then get picked up by the – I mean, look at Christopher Hastings is doing a Deadpool book now. Chris Hastings did Dr. McNinja before that. I, I, I agree, but I'm, I think it's interesting because you, you tend to put more of, a, more of a strong dichotomy than I do. Hmm. I, I, you know, to me, breaking in, so to speak, at the at the uh, Marvel or DC Dark Horse, um, is that's just a route. That's one thing you can do. You can and you can get there any way you want. You can put out a book at Oni. You can put out a book at Image. Mm -hmm. um, you can put out a web comic, and people will see it. And if you build up an audience, then that's great. But you know, I don't think that. I don't think that anybody these days would say, oh, the only thing you can do is just keep submitting pitches to Marvel until they bite. Mm -hmm. So that's why I say we're not as far apart. I usually say people, people think, oh, we're, you and I are at loggerheads. Most of the time we, we're getting to the same point. We're just, I'm coming from the north, you're coming from the south. Or, oh, or, nice. Or the, or the, no, I didn't mean it that way. I was I not making a civil war. <laughs> I had to go there though because yes. that was too that was too sweet to not pluck yes. that one. Uh, well, you are grayer than I am. What's that got to do with anything? <laughs> well, the blue and the gray. Oh, I see. And then the black and the white. Yes. Ah, uh, there yeah. we go. Uh, so, okay, I want to talk more about writing stuff because, and I want to get off of this topic of breaking in because I think that uh, we we covered that. Uh, plus, we should let Alice talk. Yeah. <laughs> yes, please. 
Um, I, when I think of breaking in, I think I'm thinking about it differently than you guys do. Um, I would consider breaking in to get something published by one of the major, um, you know, publishing houses. So like a random house or something like that. I, my ultimate career goal is not to write that Booster Gold comic. Um, it would be fun to do it, I think, but... I mean, I think maybe people that are coming up now, we may even have a different definition of what we mean by breaking in. I, th I think you're right. When I talk to my teen students and I ask them what they want to do with their future, uh, the, the answer I get is never, uh, oh, I want to do 10 years on Spider-Man. You know, uh, and, and, and I asked a group of my teen students as they were graduating high school, what do you want to, where do you want to be in five years? And they said, I want to have a graphic novel done yeah. of my own. Right? Although I still get twitchy every time I hear somebody say, I'm a graphic novelist. Uh, that's yeah, a whole I, other. Uh, yeah, I just uh, it's for some reason it just it just like it seems pretentious to me. But what, that, what, do, what do you prefer? I, well, I I'm a comic book writer. Yeah, and and or I write comics because I think that as Scott McCloud pointed out in Understanding Comics, anything you know, a comic strip, a single issue book, refers or to the medium a, yeah. or a graphic novel, it's comics. all comics. Yeah. Yeah, just how painting refers to watercolor, oil, acrylic, etc. Yeah, yeah. Or writing refers to prose, novella, nonfiction. Or, or whatever it is I do. Or whatever. <laughs> that, that loose assemblage of words There's... that you do on a uh, semi-regular basis. Um, yeah, but you could call yourself a novelist or a poet or something like that. They, I don't think that drawing the distinction is necessarily pretentious. I mean, there's a vast difference between, say, what the guy that does Least I Can Do, what he writes versus what I write, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah. we distinguish between each other. It's not really pretension, I wouldn't say. But, I mean, I call myself a comics writer anyway, but... Um, See, that, that makes you good and right. <laughs> thank you. So few people recognize that. <laughs> You're different from other people, Alice. Better. <laughs> <laughs> that was a weird... Uh, uh, what was it? What was that movie with Val Kilmer in the 80s? Real genius. Quote. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> digging deep into the '80s for that one. Um, so what? So you call yourself a comics writer, but we're stuck with this, guys. I mean, doesn't it seem that way that we're just stuck with a lot of bad nomenclature, and we can't shake it? I, well, you know what? I I don't care. I, yeah. I you know I just it's it's sort of for me, I'm okay with comics. I'm okay with comic books. Uh, you know, I I have written a graphic novel now, um, although it's separated by chapters so you know on some level it's sort of like I did several issues of a book and and you know yeah. so it, it, that was kind of weird because I, I also had the chapter breaks were supposed to be splash pages and yeah. things like that and it's sort of well then are, aren't I just doing like issues <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah but uh, but yeah I just I'm, I'm good with comics I know some people are kind of Oh well, doesn't that mean this or doesn't that mean? But if you look in comic strips in the papers, although it's going kind of back to um, more, you know, just joke comics. But you know, you had your you had your adventure comics and your soap opera comics and 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 things, and nobody thought, oh, it's just because it's on the funny pages, it's going to be funny. Mm -hmm. No one was going. Why hasn't there a punchline in Mary Worth? <laughs> yeah. Why isn't Prince Valiant making me crack up? Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, well, we only have Alice for a little bit longer oh. here. So I want to I wanna dig into some of this comics writing stuff. And since i got two writers in the room and I don't write, I just draw pictures and try to make it seem like there was a story in, in, intended there. Uh, writing, boy, you guys got the cakiest job ever, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just did a radio spot this morning to promote Kids Read Comics, and um, the, one of the guy interviewing me said, like, oh, you have one of those dream jobs making comics. I'm like, well, yeah, it is, but it isn't. And, uh, and I think that writers are in this really unhappy position of having that dream job, but even the people they work amongst think that they have the cakiest of dream jobs when yeah. it's really not, right? Well, Alice, do you want to go yeah, on this I, I want to hear Alice on this. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, compared to the amount of time that Tracy puts into a page versus how long it takes me to write it, I mean, it takes me, you know, 20 minutes to write a page, and then it takes her two days to draw the thing. So, yeah, there is there is a, a disconnect there, but I think it's not, I don't know. I mean, you have to have a really good sense of timing, I think, to be a good comics writer, and it's 
it's a lot of effort to keep thinking about things in a very structured and rigid way, or at least the way that I write them. So it's kind of like, you know, you have to divide it up so every page has this beat and this beat and these panels are here. And I mean, I've been working on Goodbye Chains for forever and I still go back and rewrite it. I, I went back and rewrote the, the part that Tracy's drawing right now. So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, the, the, the funny thing is that we're talking about a qualifier or a metric in terms of time. And we're not talking about in terms of expertise because there are comics writers and there are comics writers. There are comics writers who say, uh, panel one, he walks in the room, he hangs up his coat, he sits in the chair, he turns on the TV, he pours himself a drink, he says, hey, honey, how's it going? His wife walks in the room, panel two. Right? Uh, and uh, yes, yes, that's the... <laughs> Paul, Paul just expressed my pain and mime oh. uh, having been in that situation, right? Well, I, I sometimes uh, do adaptations of uh, scripts from uh, TV or movie people into comics. Oh, boy. And... and there is a lot of that that happens, um, and and fledgling comics writers tend to do that. Mm -hmm. Oh, he goes around a corner, and no, just he goes around a corner. Yeah, and even then, you, the the artist then has to pick where you know it. Uh, I would tend to say he's coming up to a corner, and then the next panel, he has turned the corner. Right. So there's almost like a staccato way you guys have to write, isn't it? Yeah, it's all snapshots. Yeah. Yeah. It's all snapshots. I think it's funny too, though. With um, I think the the one of the reasons why writers are kind of viewed as oh well anybody can do that. You put the words in the balloons. Yeah, <laughs> is is that people think well I write you know I write a letter I write an email I write a grocery list. It's just putting words down on paper on you know the blank electronic page. Yeah, I can do that. It's just and and they don't get the. Uh, learning about the structure, learning about uh, you know how to um, dialogue in a way that uh, sounds uh, realistic, even though you would never want to do actual cadences of conversations. Mm -hmm. You know, you want it to sound like it's a real conversation, but you don't want the um, uh, you know, er, ah. Uh, all in there. Comics dialogue has like kind of like a uh, His Girl Friday kind of rhythm to it, doesn't it? Yes, or or ho hopefully at the best something Sorkin esque. Oh boy, he had to bring him into the conversation. I did. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but but another thing that I think is interesting that's worth noting here is both you, Paul, and you, Alice, both you guys draw too. Uh, <laughs> Well, and you guys both chuckle, but, you know, Alice, I've seen your stuff. I mean, because you do another sort of, like, supplemental comic to Goodbye Chains. Um, oh, let me look up the name again. Um, yeah, it was uh, Venus in Points. I didn't, I, I haven't done that in a while, yeah. but. Okay, but. I, I thought it would be Hello Fetters. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, so what I'm, what I'm driving at here is, like, okay, obviously you guys are not going to make any great claims to be as great as, like, a Tracy Williams or a Casey Van Heist, right? But. You guys have a sense a sense of visual in your storytelling mind, right? I I have had to compose a page myself. At one point, I thought I would write and draw comics, yeah. so I I have composed pages myself. I've, you know, done my my share of trying to do what I call perspective, you know, <laughs> and and it does help you to know how to do a discrete amount in a in a panel. Mm -hmm. You get to get a feeling for what you can put in there what you can't, you know, whether you need a larger panel, smaller panel, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so, I mean, I think it's helpful, um, but uh, it also lets me be more judgmental towards my artist. <laughs> do it this way. I could have, <laughs> I could do that crap. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Alice, do you do anything like that? Do you ever um, uh, thumb out a page for Tracy? I have sometimes. Um, if, if she doesn't really understand what I'm getting at from the script, um, I will thumbnail out what I what I'm seeing for her, and actually, way way back in the very early days of the comic, um, we had another artist, and she left. But there are like two or three pages that I drew in there because Tracy was getting ready to um, basically start fresh with the next part of the story. So I'm like, all right, I will fill in the gaps here with these terribly drawn little cartoon doggies. <laughs> And um, so that's why those, <laughs> they're randomly cartoon dogs in the middle of the thing, but. Ah. Oh. Um, yeah. So would you guys recommend then if somebody is interested in going into becoming a comic book writer, breaking into comic book writing, uh, that they at least take a, some kind of like uh, rudimentary art classes of some sort, or at least try to learn how to draw stick figures doing things? 
Yeah, I would. Um, I think it's I think it's helpful to think about these things visually. I mean, if you're not thinking about these things visually, why do you want it to be a comic in the first place? I mean, you can do so many things with both timing, but also with cool visual effects. That um, I mean, if you didn't want to to portray these things visually, why not just write it as a TV script or something like that, or as a novel? Yeah, yeah. and and I I think at the very least there are some really great books about drawing comics that people should read. Um, uh, Will Eisner's... Uh, comics and Sequential Art. Comics and Sequential Art. That's, I mean, that's pretty much the place to start. Um, but even, you know, I read uh, How to Draw Comics the Marvel, Marvel Way. way. It just gives you a grounding on... And it also it helps you understand the, the effort and what goes in to the art side. Right, right. Yes, yeah, so you at least are walking into a partnership with an artist with like a little bit more of a deeper respect yes. for what's good. So what you're, you're asking of them. You're not going like dance, monkey, pencil, monkey, dance. What's that example you always like to use? Like the million guys coming over the hill <laughs> with all the. Oh um, yeah, panel. Yeah, panel one. The army comes over the hill. Right. Panel two. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember Tom Root doing that to me when I was working on PPV. But uh, okay, so any other any other books that you would recommend to a, a fledgling writer to pick up? Actually, I really loved uh, the DC Guide to Writing Comics by Denny O'Neill. Not that it matters that it's the DC thing; it's just Denny O'Neill's been writing comics for a, a good long time, and mm -hmm. you know he knows what needs to go into it. Plus, there are just um, there are a few books. Um, that uh, are just scripts, um, and uh, that those are, uh, you know, from di different writers. And seeing those scripts and seeing how people work is always good. Every once in a while, I get somebody going like, "Well, what does a comic book script look like?" It doesn't look like one thing. It's not like you know you don't have to get final draft like you do if you're working in TV. Right. Right. Uh, I want to I get some more book ideas from you guys in terms of, because here's, here's a unifying theme between you two, beyond the fact that you write. Uh, you both write really snappy dialogue, really funny, rhythmic dialogue, and that is a rarity in comics, especially these days. I think dialogue is getting more and more dry, both because of it, um, you know, more and more beginners getting involved in the field, but also because um, Will Wheaton actually posted this on Twitter. I, I don't follow him, but somebody retweeted, and I thought it was brilliant. He said, comics, stop trying to be an HBO series. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, just with that kind of dry, deadpan uh, dialogue, you know, and, but you guys' stuff has a lot of personality and punch. What, what's, what, what, what's the secret behind that? How do you do that? Well, speaking of HBO series, everybody should watch Deadwood if they want. If they like Goodbye, <sighs> they should really, really watch Deadwood, but it's Especially not if they're children. Yes. No, no that's, that's – <laughs> but I, I – and, and actually watching some of the DVD extras with David Milch are uh, really fascinating about the writing – his writing process. Yeah. I have the, uh, the companion book for Deadwood, and it's really Ooh. interesting. Uh, he's got some essays as to how he wrote the stuff, and it's just like, wow. <laughs> yeah. um, but my, my dirty little secret is I actually don't read books about writing. Um, the only one that I would recommend to somebody is something like The Elements of Style, just to understand how the English language works properly, because a lot of people don't. Um, but I actually watch a lot of sitcoms, and that's where I, I think I picked it up from. I mean, not your average, you know, just something with a laugh track, three and a half men or whatever, <laughs> but... But things like um, Arrested Development, um, News Radio back in the 90s was really great. Um, I think a lot of my t sense of timing came from watching comedy and that mm. kind of thing. Oh. So. Sports Night by Aaron Sorkin. <laughs> oh, another Sorkin actually, reference. I, I could never get into that one. Really? Because yeah. he's that. Uh, did you actually see uh, Mr. Sunshine with Matthew Perry? Um, no. It, it, he, he was born to say uh, Sorkin dialogue, that kind of snappy patter mm -hmm. sort of thing. Yeah. And he took that from his time on Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip and yeah. brought that to his, his new thing. Plus, it had the best theme song ever. <laughs> it was just, Mr. Sunshine, yay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, what about Law & Order SVU, Alice? 
<laughs> no, th- yeah. this is this is why everybody should follow Alice on Twitter. It's Hey Kids Comics. And it's Hey Kids with a Z, and then comics with an X. Because when Alice watches Law and Order SVU, she gives a play-by-play of, of the episode. And it's it's they, they are called creep tweets. Yeah. Creep tweets. <laughs> See, SVU is the only one I can't get into. <laughs> the only reason you should watch SVU is to learn what not to do. Yeah. <laughs> um, SVU is the guiltiest of guilty pleasures. It's, wow, <laughs> nothing in the world works like you have just described, but thanks for trying, SVU. <laughs> yeah. They did have Jeremy Irons on an episode. Yeah. That, that was the first and, time I watched Kathy it. Griffin. He was oh. on a couple of episodes, and... They really wasted him. <laughs> <laughs> like the Dungeons and Dragons movie? <laughs> or Aragon? No. I don't yeah. know about those, but... Yeah. yeah. But, sure. but anyway, it, it's, it's wildly entertaining to uh, listen to Alice's color commentary on Law & Order SVU. It, 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 it actually makes me watch the show every once in a while. Oh, I'm so. sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then I, I have to have my phone in my hands so I can watch Twitter as I watch Royd Cop do another dumb thing. So, Oh, they're getting rid of Royd Cop. I don't know what I'm going to do next year. <laughs> I don't know. Are they bringing in John Stamos? Uh, he was already on it. Oh, because I, I, I noticed as that any time... user, which yeah. is not a real thing. Okay. I, I am a psychologist that is... That is not a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's here's a recommendation on uh, comedies with uh, uh, dialogue, snappy dialogue. Is you guys ever watch Bottom, the British sitcom? This came by way of oh. Renee Van, Van Belsen in the chat. No, but but boy, do I love Coupling by Stephen Moffat, who's now in charge of Doctor Who. Oh, I I, I love uh, Garth Marenghi's Dark Place more than any person should, but Ooh, I don't think I've heard of that. I haven't oh. either. So is this? Uh, tell me, this is on Netflix. I don't think it is. I don't. No. Actually, I think it finally got released in Region One. I have a, a region free DVD player, so I can actually watch these things. But uh, Spaced is another good one, and that one is available in the in the U.S. Yeah, so. and and by the same people who did Shaun of the Dead, which again yep. talk about snappy patter. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. Yeah. Okay, so um, Alice, I don't know how much more time you got. It's coming up on a quarter after one, so I, I got about another ten or fifteen minutes before I really have to go. Okay. Okay. Sure. Cool. So then um, the next thing I got to wonder about is uh, how do you, there's going to be a writer who says, and this is a common question, you guys have probably been asked a million times, but you know, it, it's, it's a good question because there's always somebody new coming into this thing who needs to know. How do you find an artist? I mean, you know, I mean, it's like, <laughs> I, I can, as an artist, I can just post my stuff online, look at the pictures. Do you like it? You want to hire me? You guys got it way harder than that, don't you? Because you can't evaluate a script uh, in just a quick casual glance, can you? No. <laughs> it, it's really networking. I mean, the artists that I've worked with are people that I was either friends with or friends of friends or um, like my sister, uh, Meg Hunt. She's on Twitter at Meg Hunt, and she's excellent. She knows a lot of people, so she, she can ask around and say, is anybody looking to do something? And that's how it's been working for me. I mean, just to, to do a cold call, I tried that. Um, you know, years and years ago when I was first writing Goodbye Chains, and <laughs> that was interesting to try and do that. Yeah, but. yeah. See, I work for publishers who find <laughs> artists for me. So, yeah, there, see, that is that one like? of the advantages. Oh. Uh, but. You're still wrong, Paul. I, I, it's not an either <laughs> or, Jersey. It's it not is. either or. We live in a black and white world. I'm, I'm tired you're, of You're your... wearing black, I'm wearing white. And and and, and I t- notice also you've got gold and I've got blue. blue. So we're a little little Ann Arbor thing going on there too. Oh wow, how about that? Huh? See, see? Uh, There's it, on the surface we're in conflict, but underneath we're compatible. Oh, don't say filthy things like that to me, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are like Magneto and Professor X. In in first class, yeah. I, I haven't seen that yet. Oh, I either. Uh, oh, <laughs> apparently it's kind of slashy goodness. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, really? boy. Yeah, that's that's what uh, one of my friends has told me. Doesn't Mr. Tumnus play Professor Xavier? Yes, yes. Oh, interesting. I can't wait to see that. Oh. Oh. Yeah, and he, and he has the furry legs. <laughs> that's why, that's he why has he's, the blanket. The, he's yes. got the blanket over the... Oh, good, good. I'm so glad. So, um, anyway, enough of your, uh, you know, East Coast uh, elitist liberalism. Uh, yes, because you're <laughs> you're so conservative. <laughs> Wouldn't I have been the conservative? Actually, you would have been. Yeah, you would have been. You're I'm, the old... I'm the establishment. You're the old establishment. Yeah. yeah. He's the man. Yeah, okay. yeah. Thanks. 
<laughs> oh, you didn't mean no, no, that not, like not in a good way. Oh, okay. A man. I thought you're like, oh, you're the man. Yeah, no, 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 no I'm the man. Yeah, like from yeah. Ironside. Yeah, so the capitalized man. <laughs> the, the, ooh, that, I gotta use that. <laughs> this new new comic, the capitalized man. <laughs> it'll be the will be the counterpoint to Goodbye Chains. Uh, <laughs> So, okay, but, uh, Paul, I don't think we got your take on finding, finding an artist. I, see, I, and in a lot of times, I don't. Um, now, back, way back, um, I, I was, uh, back when CompuServe Comics Animation Forum was a big deal in the 90s. Wow. Um, I used to do some networking there, um, and that's how I uh, believe that's how I met uh, Rob Davis, who's... Uh, working on Robin of Sherwood with me. Uh, he did an issue of the original series, and he's redrawing the series, so we have a nice consistent thing. We had four artists, three artists and four inkers on the first, the four-issue series. Um, so I, I knew Rob from there. I met a lot of, you know, I network at, at comic book conventions. But, it, yeah, it, it really is. I have not gone out and sought out artists myself for the most part. Um, I, you know, I, I've got a network now of artists that I know from conventions and stuff that I can either say, hey, let's work together, let's try something together, or, hey, do you know somebody? Yeah. Uh, you guys both use the term network and point out its importance, and I think that's an interesting place to go, too, because, oh, my gosh, uh, two episodes ago we were talking about this, about how Twitter and Facebook are not the secret sauce to success. Uh, Twitter and Facebook are not the secret sauce to building a fan base, and they're also not the secret sauce to uh, networking, I don't think, because, I mean, networking is still networking, and there's good networking and bad networking, right? I think that Facebook and Twitter are a good way to keep in touch with people that you have networked with in other venues. Okay. Um, you know, just kind of because you, you can, you know, occasionally fire off a message and or mm -hmm. respond to a reply or something. Mm -hmm. um, but trying to make contacts through Facebook or Twitter, you know, I get a bunch of people, and I, you know, I'm perfectly happy to with the request, my you know, friend requests on on Facebook, and it's there are a lot of people that are just like they're, you know, working on getting into comics, however they, you know, whatever their approach, and I don't get you know i don't necessarily get a, a message saying hi i'm so and so and i'm doing this it's just here comes a friend request yeah. i can see that they've got co other comics people and it, it's a little too much like collecting <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, sometimes because <laughs> um, there's Good not analogy. there's not interaction yeah. you know yeah. um it, it's sort of like going to a to a convention and getting your your favorite artist or writer to sign something and then not talking to them yeah um, in a in a way, except that you know, people have to put up with my my comments about cutting the lawn in uh, in their friend stream or whatever it's called. I'm sad this morning. <laughs> That's one of Paul's posts. Was it? <laughs> it was it was a little bit more poetically <laughs> phrased than that, but it was essentially I'm sad this morning. <laughs> And it made me say, "I'm so glad I follow you." <laughs> yeah. Jersey's always happy when I'm sad. I just like I just like getting an emotional barometer of Paul's day <laughs> via Twitter. <laughs> and what did he have for lunch? Oh, I'm sitting in a beanbag. I'm eating chips. That kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Uh, Alice, what do you what do you think? Um, I think any kind of cold. It's basically the same thing as cold calling, and I don't think it's very effective. I mean, the people that I have successfully met and become friends with online are you know, friends of friends and that kind of thing, or people I met through somebody else and we talked at a convention and then we kept up with each other online. I mean, when somebody tries to friend, friend me on Facebook or if they follow me on Twitter, it's, I mean, I'm not a very sociable person anyway, so I don't really use those as much as I probably could. I mean, my Twitter is mostly about making fun of Law & Order. So. <laughs> Sometimes it's about being angry at my dog. That's about it. I mean, that's probably what most people's Twitters are like, but I don't use it as a very deep tool of social connection. And so when people want to contact me, for the most part, nothing really comes of it. So it feels a bit shallow sometimes. But. Mm -hmm. So how do, you, how do you do real networking then? What, what, are, what are some strategies that you guys have used? Or what, what are some best practices? Let me just put it that way. Like do goofus and gallant of networking. I, I don't buy drinks for people. <laughs> yeah, there, there you go. 
Um, but yeah, there's a certain amount of uh, just uh, you know getting out, getting out to conventions, going out, for example, into Artist Alley, um, looking for people whose work you enjoy, and talk to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, ask them what they do. You know, tell them a little bit about what you do, and just try and. Uh, I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to just go up and treat creators like people. Even if you're, oh, I love everything you've ever done, whatever, there's a certain amount, it's like, oh, I really enjoy your work, that's okay. You gush too much, and then the person starts feeling uncomfortable. Because, mm-hmm. you know, mostly it's, it, it, even though it is a dream job, we still get up in the morning, take our shower, eat our breakfast, go to work, uh, it may be at the keyboard or drawing board, but then, you know, we take a break for lunch, and we it, it, it's it's still a job. Right. And so it gets a little weird when there's too much hero worship going on, or, you know, just, oh, yeah, I love that, and I've been reading, blah, 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 blah. And you're like, oh, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, have, you, have you guys ever been on the receiving end of that? Because it's pretty unsettling. To get that from yeah, people, it, it it is. I had it. I had it for the first time uh, not too long ago. Uh, it took only seventeen years doing this stuff to get my first gushing uh, fan, and 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 it was one of those situations where they couldn't even finish a sentence. They couldn't talk to me, and then when I wanted to shake their hand for coming by and buying my stuff and to, just to thank them, they were like, "Oh no, I, I wouldn't dare," you know. And it was a lot of giggling and blushing. It was very uncomfortable. Yeah, no, I've never had that. <laughs> no, no. You just talk like you get it all the time, like very, very no, I, pompous. I, yeah, there's, I, I, every <laughs> once in a while you get somebody who's just like really enthused. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's very nice. It's very humbling and, and Oh, no, it's, it, yeah, don't get me wrong. It's wonderful <laughs> to know that your work, your thoughts, and the things that you love touch somebody's life. Never, yeah, that, that is an amazing feeling. But it's also, well, yeah, like you were saying, it's like when you go up to somebody like, uh, I, Mr. So-and-so, I don't even dare look you in the eye because you're such a legend and whatnot. That's just uncomfortable for everybody involved, right? Yeah. So I think that's what you're going in, for. Unless there are, there are a few people <coughs> in, in comics or that I'm, I'm aware of that would prefer you do that. But <laughs> Okay, well, then is that the person you want to network with? <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, in other words... It, it reminds me of something a professor of mine said when um, I had gotten up to this my senior seminar in um, English literature and, and uh, English language and literature, and we were in a 400-level class. And uh, the professor said, you know, at this point, I, f- I feel like you are colleagues. You may be junior colleagues, but you are colleagues in the, in the literary, you know, in literary studies. Um, and I think that some people need to just sort of keep that in mind, um, that uh, as soon as you start down the path, you may not be, you know, the big name or whatever, but you are a fellow comics person. And um, I was actually uh, talking, there was a memorial for Dwayne McDuffie at, um, oh, where the heck was that? Um... Now I feel bad because I can't remember what, which convention it was. Um, but uh, and it, Dwayne was a, a friend of mine. We didn't know each other really well, but we were, we, you know, knew each other for several years. And uh, the one thing that I I always noticed about Dwayne, right from the get go, as long as kind of you were serious about about doing what you're doing, he did not kind of differentiate between oh this is a fanboy or fangirl who's a wannabe. Mm-hmm. or somebody who's, you know, published, he listened and he gave advice. And now he could be on occasion a little um, a little sharp with somebody who, you know, sort of wasn't, wasn't getting, you know, wasn't paying attention or was mm-hmm. um, <laughs> uh, sort of missing the message kind of thing. But he just, he listened so well and he treated everybody with uh, such respect. Um, that, uh, I, you know, and that's, that's to me a, a really important um, role model. Uh, uh, and, you know, I, I always remember that when I'm talking to people that, you know, the first time I talked to Dwayne, he was the executive producer on the Justice League cartoon. And I had, you know, done a few things. And, you know, I, was, I think I was coming off of, um, Gotham Girls at DC. So it was, but I still was kind of intimidated. He, 
you know, written for years. He'd been a Marvel editor. He'd founded Milestone. You know, now he was a big deal in animation. But he did not, he didn't go, oh, well, you can, miniseries, huh? Well. Yeah, yeah. He's always, and, and you know, people would rather uh, work on a level of mutual respect than giddy fanboyishness or fangirlishness, I think. I, I tend to agree with you. I want I want to hear uh, Alice's yes. initial question that spiraled this all off is that uh, have we ever experienced somebody coming up and and being the gushing? Uh, what am I trying to say? In, 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 yeah, yeah. I, I hate that word, by the way, because of what you just said about Dwayne McDuffie. Yeah. But anyway, uh, I'm not saying I hate you for saying it. I just I just wanted to express. No, That's I why I was having trouble saying it. It's sort of like when Fonzie has to say I'm sorry. You know, it's like no, you know, no, no. I'm sorry. That was. I'm wrong. Oh, I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, thank you for that. <laughs> oh, my pop culture cred is gone. Uh, so, Alice, uh, have you ever been on the receiving end of that situation? Yes, we have. And it's, um, I, I basically just feel bad for them because, I mean, I am, I am by no means an impressive person. And the fact that somebody could be literally struck dumb by my presence, it's just, you know, you guys... I, are worth it. You shouldn't be um, freaking out at meeting me. I am not a great person and you guys need to, I don't know if it's a self-esteem thing or what, I mean it just, I want them to realize that they're they're pretty good too. Well, I, I don't know if it's, it's, what I get from it when I see it and when I, the one time in my life when I've been on the receiving end is that it's that they're just so desperate for an interaction with you and they're nervous about how it's going to go and that that bundles together and becomes some tension and then it's that they want to communicate to you somehow that your work has touched their life in some way and they can't articulate it and so all they can do is just say you're amazing you're amazing you're amazing and well, I, some, some of ours actually said I, I i shouldn't be here i shouldn't be i'm not worthy to talk to you oh, well, that, oh. that's yeah that's not wow well and isn't that just like screwed up humility at that point, you know? Something like that, but yeah. it's still, I mean, I don't know, I've never really felt that way about anything, so maybe I'm not understanding it. I mean, I, I think that when I've met people I really respect, it's, <laughs> I almost feel like I'm not being effusive enough. It's like, oh yeah, I really like that thing you did. <laughs> yeah. But I, yeah. I, I think that people really appreciate that more. Um, I ran into uh, an actress at um, at the um, C two E two con in in Chicago, which, by the way, is where the memorial for Dwayne was. Ah. Um, but I I ran, she's an actress. Uh, she's on Walking Dead now, um, and I liked her work for a long time. And I ran into her after hours, and I um, kind of you know excuse me, can I say hello kind of thing? And she's like, yeah. It's like, I just wanted to let, let you know that um, Lori Holden is her name. I said, I want to let you know that I really enjoyed your work on the Magnificent Seven TV show. And she's like, wow, what? That's, wow, that's way back. You know, but I always try and find something that, like, not everybody's. I didn't want to go, Walking Dead's awesome. It yeah. is, but, yeah. you know, she's hearing that all weekend long. And But she was very approachable, and she chatted with uh, myself and a couple of friends for a little bit. And then she said, you know, thanks very much for you know, watching and, and was off. Right. You know, as a guy who actually attends Transformers conventions occasionally. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, I, I go to meet the voice actors and when I'm waiting in line to meet them, I try to think of what's one thing they do specifically that nobody else does that I think is neat. And that's the thing I tell them, you know, it's like, Oh, Bloom and Kuma, you played Tigertron. I thought it was amazing how you could switch from uh, sagely wise old guy to wild animal with your voice just in like one turn of a dial you know I was I w that always thought impressed me you know and then that means I think is a better currency in that interaction than just going oh boom man, come I think you're amazing because Tekka Tron's awesome you know so uh, is you that, rock you rock yeah I saw a lot of guys saying that to Peter Cullen the guy who plays Optimus Prime and I was like oh man after 400 of those <laughs> it kind of the words lose meaning right but anyway, so starting a real conversation with the person, is that what you were recommending? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and just approach, the, we're, we're all people, you know. And if you approach somebody that you idolize and treat them with respect and as a person and they don't return that, you don't want to be interacting with them. No, that's true. So we, we all put our, our pants on one leg at a time, even men like Alice. Yeah. <laughs> Especially a men like A. Especially men, men like A. Men like A. Men like A. Oh wow, that sounds like a 
It's <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I'm blanking on his name now. Um, Spider Man uh, first. Uh, Ditko. Ditko with Mr. A. Mr. A. Black is black and white is white. So, hey, that goes back to some earlier conversations. So, okay, um, I, I know Alice has to go here in a second, so I wanted to give you a chance to, if you have any uh, web comics or print comics that people should be reading right now besides Goodbye Chains, they should read Goodbye Chains first. They should definitely read Goodbye Chains. They should it, only read Goodbye Chains. No, I have to give up <laughs> reading all other literature of any form. <laughs> Once you have finished, read it again. <laughs> It, that was that was written in all caps too. That's another thing you'll see a lot when you read Alice's Twitter posts. All caps, angry posts. caps. <laughs> or or if you want to just click through each one for ad revenues or whatever. Oh, yeah. that's right. Ad, ad impressions. <laughs> well, let's see. Um, Trudy Cooper, who is a friend of mine, she does Oglaf, which I think a lot of people know about. It's definitely not for children or work or anything like that. But she also <laughs> did an older comic called uh, Platinum Grit. Uh -huh. Which I'm not sure if it's still online, but I know you can buy a couple of volumes through Image, so that's that's that. Um, I actually have just gone in with a bunch of my friends on a um, a collective kind of thing. It's called Sugar Cell, uh, Sugar Skull, and you can read all of the comics there, and they're all definitely worth checking out. It's at uh, CandyCalavera.tumblr.com. Um, so we've got Casey's involved with that. Um, We've got uh, Beyond the Canopy. Uh, oh, by Jonathan Godsend. Griffiths. Yeah. Yeah, John Griffiths is in there. Um, Godsend, which is just amazing. I mean, the inking on that one is superb. Um, and the story is really great, too. Um, Ashley Quigg is there with Space Case Sally. So a lot of really, really cool people are in there, and you should check it out. Are you reading Homestuck? I am, and I'm not. I'm reading it. I don't, I don't think I'm really the target audience for it. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of my friends are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Casey and John, So I think I John, read it yeah. just so I know what they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that is a doctoral thesis right there. Oh, by the way, I, I did, forgot to mention that Alice is a doctor, too. Yes, huh? I am. Oh, so you're the only doctor in the room. Uh, uh, P, <laughs> PhD, PSYD, I guess it doesn't matter. You're a doctor, it, so we it, have... What's it, that? it matters. It matters. A, a PsyD is very different from a PhD. Oh, I know. I know. I know it matters to doctors. It matters to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, so which do you have? I have a PhD. Okay. So yes, she actually knows something about the human body instead of just a bunch of uh, goofy, fuzzy words to make you feel better about yourself, right? Oh yeah. I could use some fuzzy words. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I've read your Twitter. I feel sad today. <laughs> I did not ever post that. <laughs> oh. She likes making up stuff. <laughs> you poison actually, like, you. Just, What's that? <laughs> I, I do enjoy making stuff up. It's, yeah. Well, yeah, that's, I mean, catches me. I just wish you wouldn't make up stuff and put words in my mouth. I can't wait to write your unauthorized biography <laughs> in comics form. You can get it published by Blue Water Books. I'll, I'll give it a try. Yeah. Hey, that, there's a buck to be made, so uh, ruining one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Alice, we'll let you go, and then uh, Paul and I will continue on with the uh, the calendar segment and everything else that we got to do, But because I, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. But everybody should go to goodbyechains.com. Hey, kids, comics on the Twitters. Any other sites that people you want to point people at? Um, no, that should about do it. If you find those, you should be able to find every other place I am. So, And, uh, yeah, I, I'd love to have you on again sometime, because this was, this yeah, was this good. Yeah, this was fun. This was a lot of fun. Pleasure cool. meeting you. Pleasure to meet you too, Paul. Have a good, have a good day, you guys. Bye. Thanks a lot. Too. Okay, so uh, now I'm going to check to see because we might have a special Skype guest coming in late in the Ooh. game. Another, another uh, uh, comics or kids read comics guest. Who I'm going to see. Is Let's see if she's ready. So, yeah, let's talk about Kids Read Comics for a second. Because we can do that. that. That's the big one on the calendar. That's coming up this weekend. So uh, you're going to be there. I am indeed. What are you going to be What are you gonna be doing at Kids Read Comics? Uh, mostly I'm going to be uh, – I'm giving away some uh, free My Boyfriend is Monster posters. Oh. And uh, I will be signing and uh, talking to people about uh, how to make swell comics. Um, you know, well, all my friends do it this way. I won't, I won't taint them with the way I do it. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I just, uh, planning to, um, you know, meet and greet and shake, shake hands and say hello. And if, if the crowd demands it and we get like, God willing, 3000 people, 10,000 people pouring into the city of Chelsea over the weekend, uh, would you be available to do an impromptu workshop? 
I, I suppose I would, but uh, and when you've got Dan Michigan available, why would you have me? Dan Michigan is going to be too busy just walking the aisles telling stories. That's what he does at Kids Read Comics. <laughs> that's, that, that's, that's a good point. But I, I mean, and plus you've got John Ostrander and Bill Messner Loeb. John Ostrander is going to be doing a workshop for us. He's going to be doing yeah. uh, Where Do Your Ideas Come From. Oh, those guys are great. Yeah, yeah. He's, uh, we're really lucky to have him. And then we got Barbara Slate, a former DC artist and writer. Uh, she's going to be doing I a workshop. I don't think I know Barbara. You haven't met her yet? I don't think so. Oh, I haven't met her either. Oh. So, uh, but, oh, Dave, Dave is here. So I'm going to try calling him, but and then we can talk more about Kids Read Comics. Ah. Why is Dave on Raina's account? I th don't ask me. Oh, okay. She's using her computer. So, right. Dave? Hey, Jersey. Hey, do you have video? Um, not yet, but maybe in a second. Well, we'll try it. We'll try to get some video going, and then we'll put you on screen. Oh, oh there he is! is! And he's wearing the smile shirt. What a, what a devoted husband. ta -da. Hi, Dave. It's Paul Story. Hey, Paul. How's it going? Not too bad. Not too bad. Seeing you uh, this weekend? Okay. I can't see you guys at the moment. Oh, like, really? Oh, let me turn my video on. Here we go. Hey. Uh, Paul has to lean way yet. in for you to see him. So, okay, so Dave, Dave Roman, yaytime.com. The book just came out, Astronaut Academy. Saw the pictures from the, from the, the book launch. It looked like a fun time. Yeah, we had a really great time. Really good turnout. The store that we had it at is fantastic. Bergen Street Comics in Brooklyn. One of the, definitely one of the coolest stores in the world. No, oh, it's from Brooklyn, yeah. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Straight <laughs> out of Brooklyn, <laughs> right? I thought Brooklyn was like experiencing a, like a renaissance, and it's like a beautiful place now where everybody's leaping and hugging and holding hands all the time. Am I wrong? Uh, well, you, I think you got the didn't you get the renaissance part right? But I don't think there's any hugging, <laughs> not in Brooklyn. <laughs> I mean, the extra for that. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, I thought that's why. You, uh, well, never mind. Anyway, so uh, Astronaut Academy is going to be available at Kids Read Comics. I wanted to get Dave on, and thank you, Dave, for making time for being on here because you're going to be here Friday. This is part of the calendar segment. Two days. Well, he's going to be here Saturday and Sunday too. Well, Friday. yes, but he, two days he will be here. And oh then, yeah, oh. yeah, that's what you're saying. <laughs> Sorry, I. <laughs> you know, it's hard to talk and listen at the same time when you're me. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, I, I make pictures. <laughs> yeah, I make pictures. But yes, Dave Roman is going to be at the Ann Arbor District Library on uh, June seventeenth at six p.m. What are you going to be doing, Dave? Uh, we're going to be doing lots of things. We have almost three hours worth of content. Is that wow. does that sound right? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. does sound right. <laughs> um, we're going to be doing live comics reading. Uh, which is a lot of fun, where we project images from our comics and other people's comics uh, on a big screen and have kids come up and do readings with us, doing different voices, acting out scenes, uh, volunteers, prizes. Um, we're also going to be talking about uh, our careers in comics and giving advice about working in comics and uh, living a life uh, in the comics lifestyle. <laughs> uh, and then... For the grand finale, our friend Kevin Copa, who is the creator of Avatar The Last Puppet Bender, will be uh, having a sort of live demonstration of how he has created his puppet videos, which are huge viral internet sensations. Mm. Um, and he also, like, I think he's going to do a special effects demonstration where he shows off how he does, like, video effects and stuff, which is really cool. Live firebending. Live firebending. Wow. wow, that is exciting. Did I did I mention I'm I'm gonna be signing posters on Saturday and Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Paul, just just the, the banter that you get at a Paul Story table, I think, is itself an event. Well, hopefully, especially I'm right next to Rob Worley, so we'll yeah. we'll be We'll be going back and forth. I think. And, and you know what? I'm, I'm working mission control at this thing. I'm not actually doing any uh, programs. I'm yeah. just making sure programs happen. So I'll be sure to stop by your table. We'll do an impromptu little fight. We'll <laughs> argue about something huh. but that, that means nothing to anybody except yeah. us. <laughs> Watch two over 35-year-old men get very passionate about something that nobody else nobody in the room else cares about. about. <laughs> Isn't that every convention? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I'm not talking about whether or not uh, Green Lantern's ring should not work on wood or anything like that. I'm talking about we get into... Like, well, that's the golden age Green Lantern. Yeah, and Alan Scott. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm not that... No, I just... I, the, our listeners might not know. Oh, well. I, I, I like I, that our listeners, like I've I've co-opted them. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the new co-host. Uh, no, no, but I, I, I thought the joke worked just fine either way because it's so absurd to even talk about whether or not a ring would work on wood. So even if you're not familiar with uh, golden age Green Lantern, Alan Scott, you see what I'm saying? 
I'm, what do you I'm, think, Dave? I'm, de- I'm deconstructing my joke here, and I think I'm doing it right. Never mind. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, okay, so the, the fun starts at uh, June 17th. Uh, at 6 p.m. and it goes till 8 or 9 p.m. at the downtown branch of the Ann Arbor District Library in the multi-purpose room. We're we're not actually uh, recording from there, ex- but we are recording from the library. Yeah, yeah, where we are right now. Or actually, I suppose we're live casting and recording. Live casting and recording. Yes, very oh. very much so. So, um, by the way, you've got something in your teeth. What? Do I? No, I just oh thought because I, I was after my an camera? hour. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be good. Big old chunk of turkey. Yeah. Uh, so, Dave, uh, we should also say that you're going to be at Kids Read Comics with uh, me and Paul, and you are not actually tabling at the event, but you're going to be doing lots of stuff at the event, right? That is my understanding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I have to be honest. I, I, I looked at your PDF of all the different events, and I saw that there was lots of lines crisscrossed. <laughs> <laughs> and people are in one place and then they're in another place and they're packing up the tent and moving the things around so there's the arrows pointing everywhere yeah. I was I'm trying, trying to... to be led by Moses as soon as I get there <laughs> I was, and, I, I, and by Moses you mean Dan Michigan yeah <laughs> Nice. Well, that was a good, good insert. Yeah, yeah actually, I'm gonna get him the, the 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 drapery thing. There you go. So, um, yeah, yeah, I was trying to make this. I made this 12 page PDF for all the guests to try to explain what's gonna happen over the course of the weekend. And I was trying to be clear. I was trying to be like, okay, you know, because it, it's a complicated event. There's two artist alleys. There's one on the the south end of town, one on the north end of town. There's all these events going on in between. Oh, so did I just wind up scaring everybody with that? Terrified. It's just a big leap of faith, Jersey, and we're putting it all on you. Yep. Oh, great. We're just trusting you guys. <laughs> trying to, actually, we all trust Edith. Yeah, trust Edith. Uh, she will She will make sure that you guys do things right. Isn't, isn't the old expression that like a good leader congratulates his team if they're successful and takes the blame if they fail? Is that I, I don't know that it's an old saying, but it's a good one. Yeah, it's it's an expression I heard once. So, yes, blame, you know, I'll, I'll be the one that jumps on the sword if the thing falls to pieces. Uh, I, I thought that was what Dan M. Uh, Merritt was for. Yeah, Dan Merritt. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's he's the unofficial. Because I think he can fall on a sword, and it, the, you know, with his size, it wouldn't matter so much. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, I mean, the worst that could happen is that it's going to be a chaotic day, right? The worst that happens is like, oh, 1,000 people, 10,000 people are in town, and we don't know what to do with them. That's a good problem to have. Yeah. You know, that means that, that, that that's like 40 people at your table, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> tens. tens. Tens of people. Tens of people. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, what I was trying to get at with uh, where Dave wasn't actually going to be at a table is that he's going to be doing a ton. We're working Dave and Raina hard. Yeah, yeah, working them hard over the weekend. And uh, the only place you're going to be able to see them is at their events, but then also yeah, at the We're green... putting bags over them during the other times <laughs> so you can't see them. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, we, don't... <laughs> we have helicopters that come in with ropes and so they just take them away and then they can take them to the, to the special celebrity green room. But Actually, that's what you're telling them. But then you just have <laughs> Dan Merritt pick them up and go... <laughs> <laughs> no, really, it's a helicopter. Like a little kid by the back of the pants. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Dave. But um, no, no, I was going to say that you can also see them at the Green Brain table because that's going to be their landing area. Ah, well, area. see, there you go. So that's where we're going to be selling Astronaut Academy, which everybody should purchase. Everybody uh, should purchase that and uh, smile by Raina Telgemeier. Uh, the, Eisner's, the Eisner voting just concluded, didn't it? Yes, it did. Yeah. You can tell Raina that I voted for her. Yay! And, <laughs> so, and, I, and I assume Paul did too. Of course. <laughs> anyway, there we go. So... Uh, anything else that we wanted to make a note about as far as the calendar goes? I mean, Kids Read Comics, kidsreadcomics.org, right? Yep. yep. Okay. Uh, what other appearances do you have coming up beyond that, Dave, or are you just taking it easy afterwards? I wish. Um, <laughs> I'm going to ALA, which is in New Orleans, uh, and, which is a big library conference with, uh, yes. Um, and then the San Diego Comic Con is like only a couple weeks later. And I'm doing a bunch of like smaller events in New York City. Um, I wish I could go to ALA. It looks like it's pretty cool. Yeah, we sort of, sort of forced our way in, <laughs> but uh, we're pretty excited about it. Well, you were there last year. We also forced our way in that year. As oh, well. did you really? I thought it was yeah. a situation where the publishers were just like, "Well, come on along," because you guys are, you know, we're talking about you here. Um, no, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> really? Because because Raina did that big signing and that talk and. Oh, yeah. I, ju- I just assumed that was something like Scholastic was like, hey, Raina, we can't do this without you. you got to get in the bus. 
that would be amazing. Um, no, that wasn't the case that time. Sometimes, I mean, to be fair, like certainly our publishers definitely set things up for us and they definitely send us places. Um, but so far, ALA has been completely um, on our own dime. My, my publishers sometimes send me to get them coffee. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you're painting a very glamorous picture, Paul. <laughs> I get a check and I get to get people coffee. Can you believe it? Uh, no. Uh, um, can I do, I'll, I'll just say, like, the reason being is, like, publishers tend to have lots and lots of authors. Yeah. And oh, sure, sure. Yeah, I, I, so I realize So I, many people that they can send to so many places. I put you in a bad place when I said that, Dave. I'm sorry. Yeah. I didn't mean to. You're a bad person, Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad about myself now. Uh, but you can post to Twitter that you're sad. <laughs> I'm gonna po that's what I'm going to do right after we finish recording is I'm going to say, I am sad because I'm standing next to Paul. I'm going to do a Twit pick. I'll take a picture of me standing next to you and then I say, I am sad. Uh, but ALA got the free artist alley this year, and I'm so bummed that I can't uh, be a part of it because I got a feeling it's not going to be free next year with yeah. all the people that are going to converge yeah. on that. So, no, oh, it looks like Dave froze. Dave froze. Oh, oh. no, he's, he's pixelated, but he's still moving. You still with us, Dave? I'm still. I can hear you and see you. I don't know okay. if you can hear or see me. Just, just a little pixelated, just a little jagged looking. You look like a, a rasterized JPEG. Uh, Paul, where are you going to be in the weeks to come? Um, I will be attending the, uh, well, Kids Read Comics, obviously. Uh, then I'll be at um, the Baltimore Comic Con in August. Um, and uh, the Detroit Fan Fair, which will be down at Cobo Hall. Um, in September, September, right? Yeah, September. Paul, have you done the Baltimore show before? I yeah, I have. I love that show. Yeah, I've heard good things. Yeah, it's it's completely comics. It's not. There's no actors. There's no. Uh, it's it's 100 percent comics. Um, I think the only time they had a uh, they had a wrestler there one time, but he had actually written you know a comic book based on his persona. Mm -hmm. So that was okay, but yeah. uh, the the uh, promoter is very very dedicated to just focusing on comics and really, you know, he treats his guests really wonderfully. Um, also, I'll be going to uh, Mid Ohio Con in October. You never miss that one, right? I don't. I don't. Yeah. Uh, they've just uh, they've just um, partnered with Wizard World, so it'll be interesting to see if there are any. Uh, drastic changes or not, yeah. um, but uh, but I am lucky enough to be a guest at Mid Ohio Con this year, so so okay. Well, and then the other only the calendar items I had is uh, for local people for Ann Arbor uh, residents. We have the Comic Book Academy and the Com Comics Fundamentals classes starting in July, July fifth, the week of July, well, the week of July fourth, the big holiday. Uh, that week we are beginning weekly sessions for kids, uh, the Comic Book Academy, but then we also have a weekly series of workshops for adults. Uh, if you are a grown up and you want to learn how to make comics, uh, maybe we could get Paul Story to do a visit at one of the sessions. It's uh, always possible. It's always possible. But then there's a ton of... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's also a ton of concurrent sessions going on. The, the really neat thing that AADL is doing this year with their uh, graphic the comic fundamentals is um, they're doing follow-up sessions where you can get into more in-depth stuff, like uh, a figure drawing class the same week. as. So you take the regular class. I, I usually don't teach drawing technique. I teach storytelling technique, thinking about size relationships and layout and character design and things like that, but not like how do you draw somebody so they look right. Uh, so we got somebody who's going to do a class on that. And I was going to say, you I was somebody else to do here's that. Here's my softball, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say it, but... You I know, know. So when you make it too easy. Yeah. But anyway, so yes, that's at AADL.org, and uh, go to the events listings. Uh, you can do a search for uh, Comic Book Academy and Comics Fundamentals. should be on the site soon, if not now. So, and then, of course, there is, um, I'm also doing a class at the Ann Arbor Art Center that starts on the 30th of June, and that's at AnnArborArtCenter.org. Yeah, in our art center.org. So, Probably. okay. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys this weekend. You you forgot to ask Dave about what books people should be reading. Oh yeah, did you? Well, I had one. Um, oh, let me get mine. I I didn't bring any visual aids. Oh, let's see. Well, I didn't tell you. I didn't prepare you for this. Let me see. Make sure I get this on camera. So, oh, Dave ran. Yep, Dave's going to get a pick while I talk, while I vamp. So I've got Roy Rogers, Volume One from the Dark Horse Archives. Ooh. When was the last time you saw these? Never. Really? Oh, they're really fun. It's it's a uh, it's old Roy Rogers stories uh, told in comics form. Yeah. So. I, I, well, I figured that by the name. But yeah. I, I don't think I ever read any Roy Rogers comics. Have so. you watched? You watched the movies with like Gabby yeah, Hayes yeah, and every, stuff every right? once in a while. But yeah. yeah, it's kind of before my time, Jersey. 
<laughs> oh, I forgot that I'm 145 years well, old. Apparently, you are. No, I, hey, there's a lot of stuff. I'm, we I'm go not back really to big classics. on the singing cowboy, cowboys. I, I like the, you know, the non-singing cowboys. This from the man who enjoys the Zorro from the 50s. Uh, what? The Disney. Oh, Zorro. What did I say? Zorro. Did I say Zorro? I meant Zorro. I'm like, what? What is Zorro? <laughs> that's, my, that's my Upper Peninsula accent coming out. <laughs> what the heck is that? So, uh, but yeah, I mean, if you like Zorro, Zorro. Yeah, yeah. I don't, but singing, the singing cowboy thing. Plus, they, they have hero. way too much fringe on all the singing cowboys. I know, they're like superheroes, man. That's what I was going to say about this, that Roy Rogers is sort of like a Wild West superhero. He's got this crazy garish costume. He doesn't have a mask. He doesn't He's no him. Lone Ranger, oh, who, he, was, who was uh, created here in, uh, well, in southeast Michigan, uh, first appearing on WXYZ true. Radio Detroit. That's true. Hey, way to know your local history. Yeah. Michigan is pretty cool sometimes. It is. Uh, but anyway, yes, if, if you like, uh, well, I, see, Rootin', I, I don't want to just... cowboy action? No, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's the, the really, really good guy. Just like how Zorro is the kind of hero who, who smiles when he fights, right? You know, mm-hmm. and he always fights with honor. He never cheats. He never lies, you know? That's what Roy Rogers is. And yes, he sings. But guess what? In a comic, you don't have to deal with the singing if you That's don't true. like it. So. That's true. Do they have little notes? Like to represent the singing? I don't know. They might, but anyway, uh, it's it's just it's it's really fun storytelling with really beautiful illustrations, and I think that we should go back to our classics every and, once. And in the a while. Oh, well, and the the dark horse, uh, um, dark horse and IDW are both doing classic um, collections like this, and they're really nicely put together. So yes, uh, this is actually in the library's collection. So local Ann Arbor folks, you can check this out today, and they have a whole bunch more. So that's aadl.org. So Dave, did I give you enough time to make a pick? <laughs> I'm looking around desperately. Um, how about Mal and Chad? The biggest, bestest time ever. Nice. Uh, Stephen McCraney, oh. um, who. Uh, I've been following his web comics uh, for a long time. Mal and Chad actually started out as web as a web comic strip, um, and now he's got a graphic novel that just came out from uh, Penguin Young Readers, um, and it's really great. Uh, beautiful black and white, inked by hand kind of art. Um, although maybe it's digital, I don't know. But the art is really beautiful. Steven's really funny. Great sense of humor. Um, sort of like Calvin and Hobbes with time travel and dinosaurs and all sorts of fun, cool stuff. Mel and Chad. Mel and Chad. Awesome. Chad. Thanks, Dave. Okay. Well, I think that that's uh, – unlo- we've made our promotions. What, what were you pointing to Dave I for? I didn't. You, you, you're doing this thing with your thumb, Paul. I didn't get to do my – Oh, your pick. People should, yeah. Oh, let's hear it. Let's hear it. I'm actually going to suggest uh, Eisner-nominated Scratch 9 Scratch by Nine. Rob Worley. It has been collected into a trade paperback. Um, it's about uh, a cat who can summon any of his nine lives from the past or the future you know. um, to aid him in his, his uh, uh, fight against the evil scientists of, I think it's cruel. I can't remember what it stands for. It's like it's this lab that's like something lab, yeah. whatever. But it's cruel. That's awesome. That's 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 ninety percent of the fun is coming up with the villain acronyms like that. Anyway, but uh, yes, scratch nine by Paul, uh, Paul, Rob Worley. Paul Worley. Rob Worley Rob and Worley. Um, Jason Cruz, who did uh, World of Quest. Oh, yeah. It's it's beautifully illustrated. It's yeah. a gorgeous looking book, and it deserves the nomination, if not winning. Yeah. Uh, so, and, and Rob's a nice guy to boot. Yeah. So, but it, yes. That I is, have never booted Rob. <laughs> <laughs> well, when he's in Australia, uh, you, you know, when he, he breaks the law. So, well, thanks for that pick, Paul. Uh, yeah, I think that's... Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> and Rob will be at uh, Kids, Kids Read, Read Comics. Comics. Yeah. org. That's right. You're going to get to meet all the best people who make comics at this event. And me. <laughs> and Paul, too. So, uh, thanks, Dave, for making this uh, really quick... Uh, you know, stand in. And, and if you like what you see on the screen when you see Dave's face, uh, you should come to the Ann Arbor District Library on Friday night. Yeah, look at that. Oh. <laughs> uh, to see you perform. I mean, the Puppet Menders thing is amazing. You won't be sorry. Uh, and, and also getting me, getting to meet Raina, uh, New York Times bestselling author, yeah. Eisner nominee. It's uh, kind of a big deal. Hornbook? Hmm? Yes. The Hornbook Award. First comic to win a Hornbook Award. Dang. <laughs> Thanks for remembering. Yeah. <laughs> there's no hey, st- I listen. <laughs> there's, there's, there's no stopping this woman. So. No, no. So I, I feel kind of, 
you know, like I'm not worthy of, of the company. Of the I'll company. <laughs> yes, I'm going to completely unspool. But I, I, did have, I did get my, you know, my Children's Choice Book Award, nom- uh, you know, finalist. Uh, so. Oh, that's good for you. Yeah. Good for you, yeah. yeah. You, you do stuff too. <laughs> <laughs> so, thanks, Dave. I can't wait to see you. So uh, I guess we'll be seeing you on Friday. And until then, everybody should go to the bookstore and get Astronaut Academy so they can get Dave to sign it, right? Yes. Yep. Available at better bookstores everywhere. You won't miss it. It's got the hollow foil cover. And uh, oh, soon, or you soon can get it from Green Brain Comics. Get it from Green, Green Brain Comics, and uh, and eventually we'll get the Laser Blazer stickers made of uh, Doug Hero. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, thank you, Dave Dave Roman of YayTime.com. YayTime on the Twitters. Uh, thanks again to Alice Hunt of GoodbyeChains.com and Hey Kids Comics on the Twitters and Paul Story. Uh, Storyville.com and Storyville on the Twitters. That's S-T-O-R-R-I-E-V-I-L-L-E. Don't misspell it. Don't misspell it. Well, it won't take you to me if if you don't spell it right. <laughs> it, Hooray! Yeah. <laughs> Jersey misspells it all the time. So thanks again, guys. This was a lot of fun. And uh, until next time, next week at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time uh, at Comics Are Great TV, I've been Jersey Droz, Jersey on the Twitters. Okay, bye. <laughs>